while the robotic camera logged hours of video documentation. Vivica Pontien and other divers on a second research vessel used metal detectors to evaluate specific structures on the sea floor. Pontien and her colleagues realized that the wheels of many Egyptian chariots were often reinforced with bronze. They hoped to find evidence of the metal encrusted in coral. A scan of this formation indicated a circular metallic pattern around its edge, perhaps evidence of the broken rim of a chariot wheel. Other coral formations examined also contained fragments of metal. Vivica Pontien's interest in this research was heightened by a discovery she had made three years earlier eight miles due east of the Nueva Peninsula. During her stay in Saudi Arabia, Pontien not only searched for Mount Sinai, she also made several dives in an attempt to document evidence of the Egyptian army on the Saudi side of the Gulf. And the Bible tells that Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore after they came across. So I figured there must be some stuff on the Saudi side. At one spot there is like a very shallow sort of land tongue going out in a straight angle towards Nueva. You could tell it by the shift of the color of the water. It's, it, you could see how it was turquoise far out, you know. So I thought this would be interesting for exploration, so we did some dives near to that. The scattered, irregular coral formations on the Saudi side of Aqaba resemble those previously found off the Nueva Peninsula. In the midst of them, Pan Chien photographed this circular object attached to what appears to have been a broken axle or hub. This discovery was significant for two reasons. Pontien had documented the coral-encrusted form of a wheel with dimensions similar to ancient Egyptian artifacts directly across from the proposed Nueva crossing site. Her find also provided independent confirmation of earlier evidence establishing wheel-like formations on both coasts of the Red Sea in accordance with descriptions in the biblical record. And the Lord looked down on the Egyptian army, and he made the wheels of their chariots come off. A common question is, why didn't you bring up artifacts? And there are several answers to that. The best thing to do when you find something is just to keep it in position. Document it, but keep it in position. It's very easy to destroy anything. And the other thing, it's illegal to remove artifacts, but also you're not allowed to bring up any corals from the Red Sea. While Egyptian environmental laws prohibit removal of any coral for scientific dating and analysis, photographic evidence may provide a link to the time of the exodus. Scholars have recognized that the design of the chariot wheel can be used to identify specific periods in Egyptian history. In the waters of Aqaba, it appears that remnants of four and six spoke wheels have been discovered. These designs were used simultaneously only during Egypt's 18th dynasty and no later than about 1400 BC, a time frame that coincides closely to the biblical date of the Exodus. The discoveries made between Nueva Beach and Saudi Arabia have been fascinating, but they also raise some obvious questions. If God parted these waters, how could a large group of people 
including the elderly and the very young, have walked across the Gulf of Aqaba. And since we know that the Gulf of Aqaba is terribly deep, because there is a very deep section in the crust of the Earth that goes from the Dead Sea through Gulf of Aqaba, down through the main part of the Red Sea, and down into Ethiopia, and it's called the Rift Valley there. The imposing terrain of the Great Rift Valley is evident in the towering mountains that line the Aqaba coast. They drop straight down into the sea, creating an underwater canyon more than a mile deep, a seemingly impassable divide, even if devoid of water. While surveying the subsurface topography of the Nueva crossing site, evidence was uncovered that could help explain how Israel walked from one coast to the other. At its deepest points, the Gulf of Aqaba plunges more than 5,500 feet. Yet the ocean floor off the coast of Nueva Beach rises up several thousand feet from this trench, creating a wide, flattened ridge that the Israelites could have crossed once the Red Sea was divided. Simulated to scale in this computer animation, the view of the Gulf south of the Nueva Peninsula is striking. A chasm deeper than the Grand Canyon extends more than 50 miles. Its steep shorelines stand in sharp contrast to the shallow grade of the gently sloping ridge that extends from Nueva Beach to Saudi Arabia. It is a ridge that resembles what the Old Testament prophet Isaiah once called a pathway through the mighty waters. The robotic camera was used to evaluate the physical characteristics of this undersea ridge for the first time. It's just flat, extremely flat, and very wide. There are no corals, there are no pieces of rock, and we followed that far out in the Gulf of Aqaba. It got deeper and deeper, but it was very flat all the time. And the interesting thing is also that the material on the seabed is not mud, as it is in the Gulf of Suez or at other places. It's um, a thin layer of sand or silt. It is easy to walk on it if you take away the water, and there would be no limit to, to have an enormous amount of people there, except the water, of course, but that's, that's not our problem. That's, God took care of that. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way through the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Come and see the works of God. He turned the sea into dry land, and they passed through on foot. <laughs> 